Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to look at uh, creating a very simple blog application in Django and then uh, connecting it with Redis, which is a, an in-memory uh, cache. So um, I've seen uh, some posts about Redis, of course, I've read about it. Um, I've um, looked at Django's uh, implementation for or integration with Redis. And there are so many videos also available online if you want to ha go have a look at them. Um, so I'm kind of like basing my video on top of a lot of other videos that are available out there. But some of these videos, unfortunately, uh, jump over uh, quite a lot of important steps in setting up the whole environment. So I thought to create kind of like a definitive uh, guide to integrating uh, Redis with Django. So what we're going to have a look at in this video is to uh, create kind of like a blog application. And uh, I'll show you how it's going to look like so you get an idea. Uh, so here's a, uh, I created a little uh, application with Django. And what it does, it creates, uh, it has model objects for category of uh, food. And also it has model objects for recipes. Uh, recipes have a foreign key into the categories. Uh, and as you can see, there's, um, I haven't styled any of this. As you can see, I don't think the, and the goal of any of this is, should be the CSS. Uh, we could spend a lot of time into uh, getting bootstrap into this video, but I don't think that is at all necessary uh, because we're going to have a look at the integration with Redis. So um, here I'm listing all the recipes. And also if you tap on any one of these recipes, then you're going to go into that recipes uh, URL. And also this one just says here is the recipe template no information to be printed to the screen other than this uh, but the important thing that we'll have a look at later is how we're retrieving these recipes from the database so for the first hit uh, we're going to go fetch this information from the database but from any um, if you do make any more requests to get the same recipe then it is going to be fetched from the redis in memory cache so uh, this is the goal of this whole video um, so I don't think there's uh, any more intro that I have to go through. Uh, so uh, with that, let's get started by actually installing Redis. So uh, you can do you can install Redis in uh, many different ways. But uh, my favorite way is to use Brew. Uh, let's see if, if there's any instructions in here. Nope. Uh, I'm going to bring up terminal here and say Brew install Redis. <clears throat> and I've already installed Redis, so I don't I don't think that my homebrew is going to need to do anything in here to be honest with you to install it. And you can see that it says six two five is already installed, so um, I don't have to do that. Uh, but if you haven't installed Redis before on your computer, then you may have to wait a while before all its dependencies are in place. So. Uh, and I'm not going to go into details about installing Homebrew because that is kind of like, I don't think it's necessary for the goal of this uh, particular video. If you're interested in installing Homebrew, just check out um, install Homebrew and you will get information about that, how to install that. So, um, so let's say Redis is installed, but then you have to st start it. And you can do that by uh, saying brew services start Redis. And I've already started Redis, so um, I don't think that's going to do anything special here. Um, but just to make sure that Redis is running on your computer correctly, you can just say uh, Redis CLI and just send a ping message to it. And then you should get Pong back. So then you know Redis is running. And then I'm going to exit this. So let's get started. Let's get uh, started by creating a simple, maybe a blog um, project. And then in the blog project, I'm going to create a recipes application. So let's go. Well, also, before we get started with that, I'm going to tell you that I'm using virtual environments for this project. So I hope you know about virtual environments in Django or in Python. So uh, virtual environments are really good if you want to basically 
uh, grab a specific version of Python and use that for your project so that you can have multiple versions of the Python installed in your system, but use a specific version for a specific project. So it's really good. And then also installing dependencies uh, for your only for your virtual environment. So um, let's go into a folder where you place your projects. I have Django projects uh, and I'm going to say <clears throat> Uh, Django admin start project and let's call it uh, blog uh, or my blog. Okay. Uh, oh, Django admin. I don't have Django admin. How come? <clears throat> Django admin. Uh, really? Okay. Um, Let's see, Django admin, uh, Django admin start project, food blog. Really? Uh, let's see, <clears throat> do I have to source anything? I'm creating a terminal here and I'm gonna say Django admin. Uh, okay, that is probably, I need to, install Django with my virtual environment. That's okay. Uh, what I'll do here, <laughs> it's a bit of a shock, but that's all right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I think, a virtual environment. Actually, you're going to create a directory here and let's call it my blog. Um, I'm going to go and create a, a virtual environment. Um, so uh, let's say Python 3 module of VNV. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new virtual environment in uh, Python here. You can decide the uh, the place where you're creating your virtual environment completely is up to you. I'm just using this particular directory. So, and I'm going to call it my blog. Okay. And then I'm going to source that. So like this, and I'm going to say source. Uh, I think is bin activate. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to say pip env install Django. And I also want uh, Redis. So we will install Redis later, but for now, just Django. Okay. Do I have Django admin now? Yeah, great stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say Django admin start project. Uh, what should we call it? Uh, my blog or something, right? Uh, my blog, and then I'm gonna see. I'm see. I'm seeing here my blog, and I'm gonna say uh, code to start it to start Visual Studio Code and open our project. Um, okay, I trust the authors here. I can see my blog here. Um, then let's create an app as well. Uh, I'm going to say Django, where are we? CD my blog. Uh, I'm going to say Django admin, uh, start app uh, recipes. Okay. Now let's go and set up some URLs and models here. Um, my blog is here and it has recipes. Yeah. Great stuff. Uh, before actually we continue with that, I really like to set up the um, virtual environments path as my Python interpreter in uh, Visual Studio Code because sometimes it doesn't really understand where Django is and all that stuff. So I really like to go and say Command Shift P and I think it's Control Shift P in Windows. And I say Python select interpreter. Uh, up on top, you say enter interpreter path and then you can find it. And then I'm going to say uh, dev Python. Uh, and then I'm saying virtual envs, uh, my blog, I think we call it, bin, enter, and there is a Python interpreter here. And I just choose that. So now any dependency that I uh, could not resolve from the source, really? Core WSGI. <clears throat> I was hoping for it to actually work. Let's see, find. Uh, where are we? My blog, my blog, my blog. <laughs> Why is there three of them? Uh, let's go to virtual ends, my blog, uh, bin, 
and then Python. It's, it's not really happy about that. Yeah, it's not happy about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, open this, uh, bring this all of this my blog stuff, uh, manage pi. I'm going to bring them here instead. So I'm going to rename this to something like this. I think I messed up by creating way too many directories. So like this, and then pwd, cd, pwd, la, and then I'm going to code this. So hopefully he understands now uh, the interpreter is hooked to this project. So let's see. So now it's just my blog, uh, URLs. And then we should do the interpreter thing again. Maybe if it doesn't understand where Django is. Let's see from Django. Yeah, it's not understanding where Django is. So I'm going to do the select interpreter again. Browse. Um, go to this. Bin. And I would say Python. Uh, we did install Django though. So let's go to terminal. And I'm going to source. Uh, source. Uh, what was it? Dev Python virtual ams my blog um, bin uh, and then activate. I'm going to say pip env install Django. Well, it's not happy about that. <laughs> I don't know why it's not happy about that, to be honest with you. Um, because if we look at that particular folder, in here, push D, LA, Django is there. So Python, Python, C, SQL, blah, blah. Yeah. And we've sourced it. So I don't really understand why it's not happy about it, but that's okay. We're not going to get bugged with that. Let's just continue. Um, now, what we could do is to just. Um, let me have a look. I'm going to stop my audit server. You don't see my screen, but I'm going to stop it. Let's go create two models in our recipes in models. Uh, and I'm going to say class. Uh, let me have a look at what we we're calling them category. And I'm going to say this is a uh, models model. All right. Uh, we say name is uh, models dot uh, char field, I believe. And we'll give it a length of hundred and uh over any str here and then i'm gonna say uh, self name and then i want a recipe class so let's say models model uh, and this has a category which is models dot primary key oh uh, foreign key on the category and on delete it should say models dot cascade so um, that's it. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So we have more, uh, room here. And then I'm going to say name is equal to, let's just copy this. The name of the recipe is kind of like that. Then I want an image URL Then I'm going to say models char field as well. And it's max length is 500. And then it should have some description it is models text field. Okay, um, and then we def str this one as well to get its representation and we say red return self. -me. All right, now we've got two models in here. Uh, I'm going to pop D here and go back to my blog. Uh, let's uh, do the migrations now. Um, actually, before we do the migrations, we have to register this application, right? This uh, recipes application. Let's go to uh, the settings of the project. Uh, then I'll say here, uh, Django, no, uh, we have recipes and then we have, uh, apps dot recipes config. All right. Um, now we've registered the app seems fine. I'm just going to make the migration. So I'm going to say Python manage pi make migrations. Boom. Okay, and I'm going to say migrate. Great. <clears throat> so 
So now we have the migration in place. Now we need somehow to uh, go to our uh, main template. So I'm going to create a file in um, the recipes and I'm going to call this file. I'm going to say templates slash recipes slash home or uh, recipes HTML. Okay. And I'm going to say hello from the list of recipes. This is our uh, home HTML. Uh, what I'm going to do then is also to go and define some URLs for this recipe. So um, for that to work, we have to create the URLs, of course, uh, file. I'm going to say URLs pi. I'm going to go and grab the URLs pi from here, from the applications uh, URLs, and bring it into the recipes applications uh, URL. In this case, we want a root. Um, uh, how do you say, basically for this recipes HTML, it's going to be our root. So there's not going to be any slashes or anything in there. So for that to work, we also have to have kind of like a home view, like a, uh, like a recipes view. So let's go create that. Let's go to views. I'm going to say from Django uh, view. Uh, oh, it's not even going to be able to help with that. So uh, I'm going to go and grab it from here paste it here uh, and then we want a home view so let's say recipes view and this is going to be just a it's going to just be a list view maybe okay uh, this query set is going to be it's going to read all the recipes from the database so uh, let's say from dot models import all uh, and I'm going to say um, query set is equal to, uh, it needs to read all the recipes basically. So it's a recipe objects all. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to say context object name is, let's call it recipe. I don't even know how to type it. I think it's like this, but I'm not sure to be honest. Um, and then a template name. Uh, and in here, I'm just going to say the template name is recipes. Is it written like that? Recipes. I, I mean, I'm sorry about that. It's all over the place. I'm pronouncing it like this some places and pronouncing it like this some other places. Let's say <clears throat> recipe peas. <laughs> recipes. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a pro at the dictation. Uh, recipes. It's very possible that I'm mispronouncing all of this, but um, uh, misspelling all of this, but uh, you have to excuse me. Uh, uh, I think that's not the goal of this uh, video. Uh, all right, I'm going to say go to that HTML. The view is there. Now we have to go define it in the URLs. So I'm going to say from, um, from dot uh, views import, what's it called? Recipes view. And uh, then for the root, I'm going to say the root is recipes view as view and its name is recipes. All right, like that. Now we've defined our URLs. We have to go to the applications, uh, sorry, the projects URLs and actually use that. So uh, I'm going to go and grab that from, let's see. Uh, we have to import that as well, right? We have path and let's include import the include as well uh, admin can be as it is then I'll say path recipes slash should be the include of a recipes dot urls uh, like that uh, and now if everything goes fine I should be able to start the application and then say localhost blah 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 and then uh, slash uh, recipes slash. Then we should go to our views and then to our template, <laughs> if any of this works. Um, let's say Python 3 manage.py start pro uh, run server, I think. Yeah. Woo. It's fine. Uh, I mean, I sometimes get scared when things actually go fine when I'm a bit unsure. 
Okay, this is expected. This is kind of expected because we haven't defined any URL for it, but we should say recipes slash. And here's the list of recipes we got to our template, okay? Now we should be able to go to our template and kind of define a um, table. So uh, let's see if I can kind of grab some code for that, but maybe not. Uh, I'm going to close all of these files at the moment, and I'm going to go to our templates, and then I'm just going to print this thing, uh, recipes, and see if we're getting it in here. You see, it's a query set, it's an empty query set, because we have no recipes. So um, let's go and define some recipes then. Uh, I'm going to go into our admin here, and I'm going to say admin site register. And let's say from dot models import blah, uh, blah, register. Mm, what was it called? Category and admin site register recipe. Okay, and then I'm gonna stop the server. I'm gonna say Python, uh, or I think it's Django admin actually, make super user. Create super user. Uh, it's like this. So Python manage py create super user. And I'm gonna say user is vandad, it's fine, no email, and the password is also vandad. Of course you shouldn't do that. Um, but I'm just creating it for the sake of simplicity here. Then if I run the server uh, and I go to our local host slash admin, then I can log in with that user, admin, oh, sorry, Vandad, Vandad. Uh, and I can see categories and recipes. So let's go and add some categories and we say vegetarian, uh, save and another one, um, meat, meats and then we say fishes uh, and then save and then we go to recipes let's start adding a recipe for vegetarian i'm just going to say images vegetarian food uh, grab this one looks good and then copy image address i'm going to say veg food one veg info one Add another one, meat, images, meat, food. <laughs> Sorry, I have no imagination. Uh, copy image address, uh, meat, uh, one, and then image is this, meat, image, meat, recipe, one. And the last one is going to be fish. I'm going to say fish, fish, food, one, and then image URL is going to be fish, let's say fish and chips um images grab a nice fish and chips image from here and then i'm gonna say fishy fishy and then save it now if i refresh here then we get three recipes okay so let's go create a table a little very very simple table um and i'm just gonna say here are the available recipes uh, and I'm going to create a table and T head and then a T body here. Uh, for the head, I'm going to create a row with, uh, let's say, category name. Copy paste this here. So there are three columns that we're going to display. Uh, recipe, name, and then more info or something like that. Um, that's our header. And for the body, then we're going to create a loop here and we're going to say for recipe in recipes I think <laughs> uh, and then end for this is the this is the disadvantage of not being able to actually spell things I don't even know what I'm calling it we can know that by going to our views uh, and have a look at the object it's called recipes so that's it um, then I'm going to create a row here as well tr tr <laughs> what uh tr uh td um so like that and then for the first one we have to say recipe dot category that's name uh and then we should say um recipe dot name and of course we have to put these in in their tags um like that <clears throat> sorry and then here there's going to be a more info. I'm just going to say a uh, 
href. And we're going to do like a reversed uh, URL uh, search here. And I'm going to say for the href is going to be boom, boom, URL. And let's call it, uh, that URL is going to be called recipe in the future. Uh, and then we're going to pass the recipe ID as the parameter. Uh, uh, what am I missing here? This. Yeah, that looks good. And then in the A, we're going to say more info. Okay. This is, I think, going to give us an error right now because we don't have this defined. Uh, I could be wrong about this, but let's have a look. Um, you see, this is says for recipe recipes because it doesn't really know how to parse that. So um, maybe we should then go and define our recipe view as well. So let's go to views and then we say class recipe view, and this is going to be just a generic view. And at the moment, um, let's define a get for it. Uh, I just want to test quickly. Uh, and the get itself, I think, uh, request args and kw args. And then we just return HTTP response. We say hello, uh, or just details page. Okay, something like this. Uh, and then we go into our URLs and define this. And we say path is, uh, what should the path be? Let me see how I defined it before. I think uh, we'll just pass the recipe here. Uh, recipe uh, and then slash int for the primary key. Uh, okay. Uh, and in here we'll say recipe view recipe view as view and then its name is going to be recipe and remember this is the exact same name that you're or <laughs> this is the same name i'm using um here in the recipes uh, uh template it's called recipe here and it should actually be exact same name that we're using here that's how django will be able to look that uh, view up so if i refresh here Let's see what's happening. Uh, could not parse the remainder for receiving residuals, blah, blah, blah. Could not parse the remainder for, oh, it's because I'm using four. I should use four each. Uh, and then refresh for each recipe and recipes. What, what am I doing here? Oh, no. Like this, it should be. What am I doing there? Uh, let me have a look. Uh, home. Four. And is, is this, I think this is fine, right? Four and N4, that should balance it. Yeah. Hello from the list of recipes here at available recipes. And I can see the rest remove that as well. Okay. Uh, so now if I refresh this, you see, if I tap on this, then it goes to this and passes the ID of the item that we're actually looking at. So now what we need to do is to go into our views, into this recipe view and actually create our cache properly. But before we do that, we have to go and install Redis. So let's say uh, pip install Redis. Redis, yeah. Uh, I think it's called, let me, let me have a look if I've done that before. Uh, pip env install django redis is called uh, so django redis yeah yeah it's this one that we have to install so because i'm using virtual environments then i'm going to use pip env okay so let's go uh, and i'm going to say pip env install django redis <laughs> all right um, then i'm going to go and we have to set up the cache. So let's say Django Redis cache. There's a good GitHub repo here uh, that provides you the default uh, cache that you have to place in your settings. So open up your settings file, settings pi, and just place that there, the one that we copied. Uh, great, it's the right port as well, 6379. Um, that's great. Because I mean, we can confirm that because it, it is 6379. When we installed it, we got that information, but you can also telnet into it. You can say telnet 
I believe you could just tell it into that. Uh, like this, and you say ping, and you get pong back, okay? Uh, how do we exit Telnet? Quit. Yeah. Uh, and Telnet is something that you can also download with Brew on your Mac if you want. Uh, okay, that's for Redis. And then what we need to do is to go in our views and then say, uh, we need to import our... I had this somewhere written down. Uh, it's called from Django, Django cache. Uh, sorry, core.cache import cache. So the goal here for us is that when we go to the recipe view, we have the primary key and that's like, um, let me put it here. Recipe ID is kwargs pk. Uh, and that is sent uh, by uh, uh, here. You see, we've defined it as int pk. So the key is going to be in kwargs as pk. Um, so here's the PK, then I'm going to, sorry, I was explaining, the goal here is for us to um, read the object, try to first read it from the cache. If it is available there, then we're going to return it from there. But if it's not available from there, then we're going to read it from the database and then cache it and then return it. Then the next time when we get into this recipe view, or the user refreshes the screen, for instance, then we should be able to retrieve the recipe from the in-memory cache. So let's say um, if cache get uh, the, if it can get this recipe ID for us, then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's see, uh, recipe is equal to cache get recipe ID. Um, and then I'm just going to say print. What should we say? got the uh, hits the cache maybe uh, otherwise we're gonna say we're gonna basically read that from the database i'm just gonna say recipe is recipe did we not import this yeah isn't this called recipe recipe dot objects and then get and the pk should be equal to the recipe id uh, and then I'm going to set it in the cache. So that's important. Uh, and I'm going to say is given this recipe ID, set this recipe in there. And let's just print and say, what should I say? Hit the, hit the DB. Um, and since this can, I think the get can actually throw an error. So let's try like this. And then I'm going to say, um, except uh what is it i think is recipe does not exist or something uh, and we're just going to return http response this recipe does not exist something like this uh, and then let's create a context here and um i'm just gonna say oh also this needs this recipe view this probably needs to get its template somewhere as well um should we create a recipe template yeah let's create recipe html um, and then this is the recipe template i'm going to close it but and then define it in this view i'm going to say template name uh isn't it called template name yeah it is uh, template name is recipes um, and the recipe HTML. Uh, and then I'm going to create a context here. I'm going to say context is equal to recipe is this thing. Recipe. Yeah, it's reading it from there. Uh, once we've created the context, then we can actually render our uh, template. So I'm going to say return render uh, with the request. Uh, and then I'm going to say self template name and then the context. That's it. OK. Uh, and then I'm going to run my server. So let's close this, close this. And fish food one. OK, that's fine. Let's leave that. Uh, but at the same time, I want you to have a close look at the, the console here. So. I'm going to refresh here 
and then I'm going to go and look at this, you can see it says hit the DB and this is the recipe template. But now if I refresh the page, it says hit the cache, right? And I expect if I go out and in again, it should hit the cache. You see, it's hitting the cache. If I go back here, I say meat, it's hitting the DB because it's the first time we're viewing that particular recipe. And if I refresh, it's saying hitting the cache. Uh, the last thing that's remaining really is just to maybe go to recipe HTML and here just say recipe name or something just to print it out. Um, and that's the name. So that's it. There you have it. Um, here was a basic setup of creating a Django project, a Django uh, application called recipes. Um, we've set up Redis. Uh, we're, we've set up some models here reading the data from the database, setting it in the Redis cache, uh, and the next time we're reading that data from the cache. So um, I just want to say a quick thank you to all the people who are uploading videos on YouTube for um, Django-related uh, um, applications and examples. I've learned a lot from them, and this video is heavily based on a lot of other videos that are available already on YouTube. So huge shout out to everybody's who everybody who's updating content, uh, uploading content on YouTube. Um, huge thank you to you. And also, um, if you have any questions, I would uh, love to hear from you. So please do let me know. And I hope uh, that you learned something from this video. Have a great day.